G'day, let's have a look at this Milwaukee D-handle jigsaw. Now it's called a D-handle because obviously the handle looks like a D, the whole sort of shape is a bit like that. We've got an M18 5 amp hour battery in it, and a brand new tool, so it hasn't actually been used before. In order to pull the trigger, you do have a little safety lock up top, so you just flick it from this side here, and then you can pull that handle, I'll pull that trigger. And it's got the variable speed control on it, which is very nice. Now we've got the back, back pressure here as well. So you adjust this and it just moves this little bit down here. So it'll adjust the pressure on the actual blade. In order to change out the blade, you've actually got this toolless blade change up here. So you pull this, turn it, and then it just rotates. Oh, I'm not sure how to see that, there you go. And then it rotates that bit in there. And then you can insert your blade and release it and it's just held in there with that pressure. The other thing we've got, we've got this lever down the bottom here. So I'll show it this way. So you can pull it this way and what that does is it loosens this bottom plate and then you can adjust the angle of it. So nice and easy way to lock it and it's about 45 degrees there. And it goes the other way as well so you can change that whatever angle you need. Really nice to see this is all just toolless, so really, really easy to adjust. And then the other button here we've got is just for the ventilation, so it'll change where the air is blowing. You can see this slides in and out, and that just redirects the airflow of where it's actually going. All right, so I'll take the battery off, and I think just as a lot of the other Milwaukee tools, we've just got the two clamshells that are put together and held in by a whole bunch of screws on this side. So let's get into it. Alright, so this was one of the more difficult Milwaukee tools to get apart. I think the way it's secured together is a bunch of these components are held in place by just the ribs on the case. And also we've got this extra wire here, which I'm not going to go pulling out all the way through because it seems like a pain to get back in. It's just for the LED. So there's a tiny little LED down the bottom there. And the wire runs here, here, all the way along the end, down here, and then somewhere else. So actually yeah, through the rest of the handle and then through this little slit and then down into the computer. So that seems like a really complicated way to have done that, to have run that all the way around. Although I guess there's a lot of other stuff in between, so they didn't want to just run it straight across and they wanted to get a light here, which is nice. That does shine, that is a very useful light. So it does work, but that's a, that's a lot of effort to have gone through to get that. But either way, the clamshell is extremely sturdy. It's got virtually no flex to it. I can only just flex it a tiny little bit. It's got a lot of this ribbing and a lot of really thick sort of walls there, which just hold it really sturdy, which is great to see as, as well as a lot of other Milwaukee tools. This is really nice. And then on, on the bottom here, we've just got that other side of the clamshell and then the spaghetti of cables that run all over the place and the assembly that makes the thing go around. So on this side, see how we go on on this side here we've also got the battery terminal so that comes in and then that runs up to the trigger and that is a really nice trigger cool that's, that's really good to see actually it's got that internal lock so a lot of other milwaukee tools so like this impact wrench here when you lock it into the center mode it prevents that trigger from going but it's got an external assembly there so it's not inside the actual trigger whereas this when you prevent it there, it's, it's within that trigger assembly. So it does, you can see this, this channel up here is free to push in when this little arm is out the way. But the moment you push the arm into it with that really nice positive click, it locks in and it just prevents that from going further. So it's nice to see that's just part of the trigger. So then the trigger, we've got the battery going straight into the trigger, which will be the on and off. So these guys here will just basically break it and break the circuit or close the circuit in order to turn the whole thing on. And then this other cable here, we've got, that's just going to be for the potentiometer in here. So it's just going to have a little wiper and depending on the position of that wiper, it will change the resistance, which the computer is going to measure 
and then because this is a brushless motor it'll have some MOSFET transistors that'll then turn those phases on and off and actually run the device that way and then the other thing here we've got is just a diode so it's nice it's a nice big diode and that's just in between these bits so uh, in between the two ba battery terminals or the terminals going to the battery so the reason that's there is just when when this trigger is let go there's a strong back emf current that goes from the motor back into it so that's just stopping that to to prevent anything going back into the battery and damaging anything there and then the other wire since we already talked about this we've got that led thing there or the the wire going to the led I might try to lift all of this up so I can give you guys a bit of a close-up, but it's going to get a little bit messy, I think. Actually, that'll be all right. All right, so this is the brain box. This board here, there's not really anything on that side, just the actual solar terminals. But on this side here, we've got a massive heatsink. Actually, it's not, not, the whole thing isn't heatsink. So, okay, let me give me a sec. So what we've got is we've got six of this MOSFET transistors, three of them are on this side, and then three of them are hidden inside that white gel that's all sandwiched in there. And then we've got that heatsink that's actually just slid on top of them and filled in with a whole bunch of, I'm going to assume that's some sort of thermal compound just to conduct that heat out. So there's actually six big MOSFETs in here. And they're going to be what's actually powering the motor or what's actually taking that constant DC voltage from the battery. It's just going to be positive and negative coming straight in. And then these guys, or the six of them, are just going to chop it into three phases for the six coils. Or I think it'll have six coils, but three different phase. So in sets of two for the motor. And then that'll actually turn the motor around. The other thing that we've got here is just a capacitor there. And then underneath... There's just a couple of diodes just there where my thumb is. It's just kind of hard to show this, but just where my thumb is, there's a couple of diodes there as well that will just prevent any anything bad from coming back into the board from the motor. Can't actually see a microcontroller, but it's definitely going to have one on there. It must just be under all this other white goo here. So just a little controller. Um, that'll just be a little controller that'll just read the input from the potentiometer from the trigger. Ugh, okay, which is now falling into greasy. It's all greasy. And that's then going to be controlling the MOSFET, so turning them on and off, depending on the speed as well. All right, so... Okay, this has gotten a lot messier than I thought, but that's all right. Not that I wanted it to. All right, so then we're coming to the motor. I'm not sure if it's going to come out nicely, because I don't want to pull this whole assembly out, because it is a completely exposed gearbox with a lot of grease there, and the parts just are held in place straight into the plastic case. So it might be a pain to get all that back in. But basically, we've got the brushless motor here, a nice bearing there, and then this board on the back. This board is just going to have a bunch of Hall effect sensors that are just measuring the magnetic field from that rotor on the inside. So the reason that's there is so it, so the computer knows the orientation of the rotor with respect to the stator, and then it can actuate those different or turn the magnetic fields on those different phases on, and that'll actually then move the rotor over. These coils look really nice and thick which is good, you want to see a really nice thick copper wire here. That'll just mean that you can pump a lot of current through here with low resistance and have low heating, but get a lot of current, which directly results in torque. And then we also have this fan that we briefly saw from the outside. So as that'll spin, that'll create suction from, from this way here, and then force that air out through centrifugal force through those little slits on the side. And that air is going to be sucked in. There's a, there's a little hole down here, and there might be another one on the other side of the case. Yeah, there's another one there. So the air is just going to be sucked in there through the motor and then get expelled out this way. So the gearbox isn't actually getting any active cooling, at least, but the motor is, and that's probably what's going to warm up the most. So that'll just come into this little gear down the bottom here, which comes up to a much bigger gear. So there's a big reduction here. And then this really just seems to go straight onto the other side through a bearing in these two big metal plates and then we've got this assembly here so this is actually what's going to be moving up and down sorry i'll get that in camera a little bit better so this here is actually what's going to be moving up and down as that ring there rotates with with one little nipple there protruding outwards and again that's what's moving this up and down which moves the whole shaft carries it down to the bottom and then that's where the blade is and that's what's actually going to be actuating up and down to actually do that jigsaw cutting motion. Just another sort of metal frame on here holding everything together. Not sure what that is. It just looks like nylon and a little spring. 
Oh, that might just be providing the pressure. The pressure onto the blade as well there. But that's pretty much it. It's actually quite simple. So we've just got, obviously, the, the brushless motor, a very small, well, actually a, a big, but a single gear reduction. And then we're going straight into this other side of the assembly, which has just got that up and down motion there. There's obviously a lot of design that went into this, but at the end of the day, they've got it very nice and simple. All right, so what I might do is, I don't think I can get this motor out nicely without taking the whole thing out, but I might just be able to turn this a little bit. There you go, so as I turn this motor, if you watch this and this whole arm, you'll see that go up and down. Ah, it's, it's not all that nice to turn by hand. But there we go, so that's that's up at the top of the cycle, and if we just keep doing the same thing, that'll eventually start coming down. There we go, and then that's just at the bottom of the cycle. And what I just noticed as well, there is a little bearing in that. So that little hole there is, is just to hold. Actually, I'm not sure if it's an actual bearing, but it's just got a little roller. So that will roll up and down against this. And there's obviously a lot of grease within that just to lubricate everything because there's a lot of friction that happens there. And especially if you use this for a while, this, this will get pretty warm as, as all that friction converts to heat there. But they are big solid bits of metal, so they will absorb quite a bit of that heat and dissipate it through this whole gearbox assembly. So there probably isn't going to be a single point that's going to get very hot, although this assembly here that goes up and down probably will. But it's 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 surrounded by a lot of metal, so it should be able to dissipate that pretty well. Although I can't again see any active heating, sorry, any active cooling of the gearbox area, which makes sense because the moment you get any dust in here, all of this grease is just gonna get really yucky. And especially if you get any sort of metal filings or even just some dirt into this, it's gonna start abrading all of those bits and it's just gonna become a mess and seize up. So that's why I think they, they've got active cooling for the motor up until here, but then this gearbox itself is not actually actively cooled. They're just relying on the amount of material there that will just absorb the heat and then you're just not using this for extended periods of time. All right, I think that's as far as I'm gonna dig into this one. I'm give my hands a nice wipe. I've got grease everywhere before I put this back together. But that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you, hope you have a good one.